Welcome back to the second installment of Modding Mischief with D-Pad Gamer. Is that a good name? I'm not sure. It was suggested to me by one of you guys and I thought I'd give it a go, so let me know what you think. This time around we'll be messing around with a hat in time. As always, links to the mods can be found in the description, and for this one, you'll actually find them in a Steam collection list thing I've thrown together. Okay, let's start out with Cappy. As one might expect, it has all the fixings. You throw it out, looks good. Jumping on it works as well. More importantly, capturing does work, but only on certain things. Mafia men? It makes sense. Birds. Awesome. Sentry owls? Yeah, sure. Cameras? Uh, okay. It makes me wonder if these are possibly reskinned owls, but that's just a thought. Dead Bird Studios is also a great place to show off Cappy's ability to be thrown through solid objects. If you stand right up against the wall when throwing it, it'll go through, allowing you to skip past certain walls. You could also get yourself trapped in a normally inaccessible room. You could always quit out of the level to escape, but I ain't no quitter, so I just won't show it in the video. By far the oddest side effect of capturing Al here is that if you awkwardly walk off the ledge, they're just fine. Uh, yeah, sure, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, sure. If you exit your possessed body, you will have her be immediately sent back to the last checkpoint. By far my favorite enemy to capture is the goats hanging out in Alpine Skyline. They're big and slow, but just listen to them walk. Nice and menacing, right? Well, try walking them off a ledge. Yeah, it's like something out of a cartoon. There's a couple of sleepy raccoons that we found elsewhere in the map. If you try capturing them, you can't attack or jump, but you can hover. That means you can fly across the level, and it looks almost sort of peaceful. In the final level, I decided to go take a look and see if anything was worth capturing. However, I ran into something odd. I doubt it has anything to do with the mod, but I actually ended up falling through the lava, which usually damages Hat Kid and sends her back, and I was on the floor. I walked forward a bit and got damaged and sent back. When I respawned, it looks like something's missing. Now let's jump into the first map of the video, Bomb on Battlefield from Super Mario 64. It's a pretty solid imitation of the original map, though I will say the bomb bombs are a bit more... explodey? While this map looks great, only the 8 red coins and chain chomp stars are collectible. As for the second one, it works as expected, stomp down on the post and free the chompy boy. However, watch how he leaves the scene. When I went to collect my prize, the camera got a little bit too close. It looks like Hat Kid can barely contain her excitement. <laughs> this map is a refurbished version of Womp's Fortress, and it uses characters from Manhattan Time to make it work. I give this 5 Womps out of 5. Onto some Mario Sunshine themed mods, in this one Hat Kid finally gets to go on vacation to Al Delfino. It's just as I remembered, but it seems this one is later in the game because there's no Toad screaming about Icky Pain My Goop. Overall it's a pretty good course. Good spread of collectibles, nice implementation of the hookshot line. My only issue however, is that for whatever reason, using the ice jump pad results in one of the orbs being left in the air. There are enough orbs to reach the 100 mark, so this doesn't break the level, but still, that orb will bother me for the rest of time. Peace. In the arms of the 
Onto the mainland, the Delfino Plaza mod has Hatkid wandering around looking for collectibles, talking to some cool birds, and taking on some challenges for six timepieces. There's a lot of fun stuff here, but I do have some things I actually don't like about this mod. Primarily, the challenges are a bit lacking. The Pachinko Machine, however, is great because it doesn't have Sunshine's black magic physics. I'm a Chuckster! I am a Chuckster. I am a Chuckster. I am, in fact, a Chuckster. To be honest, that's all the explanation this mod needs, but let me ruin it with some more words. This map is actually really good. The chucking actually works really, really well, and this mod uses some other hat and time mechanics to turn a one note feature from Sunshine into a full blown course. Onto a couple Mario Galaxy mods, we have a lovely mod called Express Owls and Gold Leaf Galaxy. There's not a lot to say with this one because it's just well done. I will say though that any excuse to talk to the caught agents is great. I love giving them my personal information. This mod is very... Sweet. Ever wanted to play as Link Kid? Well, with a few mods you can! Link's hat and Zelda sword pack equals a Wind Waker in time. In the Hyrule Castle map, you can run around collecting rupees and even complete the Triforce block puzzle to gain access to the sacred chamber containing the Master Sword. For all you hat kids watching at home, please do not recreate any stunts as seen on YouTube. Unlike Hyrule Castle, the Great Sea has you, well, on top of the Great Sea. This one has you visiting islands from Wind Waker during a storm. I guess Guru Guru has been going a bit crazy. Okay, so I actually really like this map because it's a bit unexpected. I underscore test M is a test map found in the files of the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, which was used to test Link's movement. I actually covered this map in my video of beta content for Wind Waker, but it was pretty lacking. I mean, it's a test map. This mod, however, retools it into a really nice treasure hunt. Again, well done. The Conductor's Village is a quaint little place where the Conductor and the Express Owls live when they're not making garbage movies. Overall, this is a pretty well put together mod, but for some reason the water was just invisible. I think something went wrong on my end. Okay, so fun fact time. During a Hat in Times beta, there was a bonus act called the Beta Heroes Challenge. It very much looks like a toy box that just dumped into 3D space, but it actually plays pretty well. Thanks to this mod, we could play it even today. Another solid, straightforward map is the Lava Lands, which is a short treasure hunt map which uses most of Hatkid's arsenal. I couldn't have said it better myself, so I didn't. I just read that off of the Steam page. I know many of you have family and loved ones still in the city, and that you want to help them. Well, this is your chance. Godzilla. Super Hat. Super Hats is the most innovative mod I've played in years. Time only moves when you move, though the camera refuses to obey the same rules. For real, this mod is pretty neat, but it does feel a bit lacking. Without the corresponding gunplay, I don't think Super Hat will be catching on anytime soon. I will say, however, that my favorite thing to do is actually just watch the growing and shrinking animation of the Kaiju Hat.
just looks fantastic. One step, and then again, let's do the Mario all together now. You got it. It's the Mario. Do the Mario. Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step, and then again, let's do the Mario all together now. 